Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin our lecture with the recitation of the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Chari Karti Bari Bharti Sanjari Harti Lilaya In this course we have concentrated on the Tatpurusha Samasa. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the major types of samasas in Sanskrit. Avyayibhava, Tatpurusha, Bahurihi and Dvandva are those four major types stated in the grammar of Panini in that particular order. Tatpurusha Samasa is one of the most important because by far it is the most productive of the samasas. It also has got many varieties in comparison with the other types of samasas. Also the number of sutras composed by Panini in order to explain various features of Tatpurusha Samasa are too many in comparison with the other types of samasas. The derivation of the Tatpurusha Samasa output can be summed up in the following manner. We have X and Y, both independent and separate entities and they both have different independent meanings, also word forms and also the accent. They are however interrelated in terms of meaning. Now the speakers of Sanskrit decide to merge them together and bring out one output in the form of x, y. This is one output, one unit. One unit in terms of meaning, in terms of the word form and also in terms of the accent. Now when this x, y becomes part of the sentence, it becomes interrelated with the other external constituents of the sentence. Now this interrelation is possible of this unit only through its head which is Y. So Y assumes the position of the head. This is the speciality of the Tatpurusha Samasa. When X is interrelated with any other external constituent of the sentence without going through Y such an example of a samasa is considered as an exception and also is noted as a samartha samasa in the tradition. We also studied several varieties of Tatpurusha samasa. We started with Vibhakti Tatpurusha, then we studied Karmadharaya, along with it we studied Dvigu, then we studied Pradi Samasa and before that we studied Ekadeshi Samasa as well as Nai Samasa, then Pradi Samasa and then Gati Samasa and now we are studying Upapada Tatpurusha Samasa. This is one of the most productive types or subtypes of the Tatpurusha Samasa. Upapada Samasa is stated by the Sutra Upapadam Ating. 2.19. This sutra has got two words upapadam and ating. So upapadam is 1 slash 1 which refers to the word designated as upapada by 3.192 tatropapadam saptamistham. 
Now, Upapada is assigned the term Upasarjana because it is in Prathama by the Sutra Prathama Nirdishtam Samasa Upasarjanam. And then Upasarjanam Purvam is another Sutra which ensures that this Upapada occupies the initial position in the Samasa, Purva Nipata. The word Ating is also there in the Sutra which is in one one and this means which is not thing, which is not a thing anta. Now the words continued in the sutra are sup sahasupa, samartha padavidhi also. Now the meaning of the sutra so far is that any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a thing anta. Repeat, any subanta whose pratipadikas are designated as upapada is compounded with any other interrelated word which is not a tinganta. So the questions arise here, namely, what is the need of the word a thing in the sutra? What is achieved by this particular negation? Because when we make not a tinganta a condition for this particular sutra to apply, the only other available option through this negation is that of a subanta. And subanta option is available to us anyway because of the continuation of the word, sup. So we are forced to think that in this particular sutra, the basic condition of sup and sahasupa does not apply. Rather, sup and sah only will apply. So the output generated by this particular sutra would be of the following type. If we have Purvapada with a Pratipadika plus Su, then in this Purvapada, finally the Su Pratya is going to get deleted and the Pratipadika is going to remain and the second member of this compound is of the nature of Dhatu plus Kritu and so now this dhatu plus krit remains and so now we have the samasa form of this kind namely a pratipadika and dhatu plus krit. This will be the finally generated compound output structure. We have studied some sutras which state certain krit suffixes which are part of the upapadha samasa because these suffixes are stated assuming the upapadas and the examples generated are that of the upapadha samasa. Now the next sutra that we are studying here is Gaposh Taku 3 to 8. Now this sutra has got the word Gapoho which is 6 slash 2 which should be 5 slash 2 which means immediately after the verbal roots ga to sing and pa to drink. The next word is tak, one slash one. Tak means the suffix a. Marker t in it triggers the addition of feminine suffix ni to the compound and the marker k triggers the deletion of a at the end of the dhatu. Karmani seven slash one is also continued when the upapada is having the relation of karma with the action denoted by the verbal root, that is the meaning. Anupasarga also continues, when the upapada is not an upasarga. Words continued are dhatoho from 3.191 and this means immediately after a verbal root. Pratyaya 3.11 Tatropa Padam Saptami Stham 3192. Also Krada Thing 3193. Kartarikrit, which states that the meaning of the suffix is Karta. There is a statement on the sutra Surashi Dvoho Pipate Riti Vaktavyam. So when the verbal root Pa Pibati is taken for compounding, it is compounded only with the two. Upapadas, Sura and Shidhu. For the verbal root Pa, 
This suffix is added only when Sura and Shidhu are the Upapadas. Sura and Shidhu both mean liquor. So now the meaning of the sutra is the following. The suffix tak is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal roots ga and pa when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal roots in the relation of karma. Sura and shid, shidhu for the verbal root pa and when the preverb is not an upapada. I repeat, the suffix tak is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal roots ka and pa when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal roots in the relation of karma, namely sura and shidhu for the verbal root pa and when the preverb is not an upapada. So we note that this is an exception of the suffix ka because the verbal roots are ending in a and then there is no upasarga stated as the condition anupasarge. Obviously, atunupasarge kaha has got scope of application over here. And in such a case, the suffix tak is stated which therefore acts as an exception. So now we have the meaning one who sings the sama. So, Sama Gayati, that is the Laukika Vigraha, Sama Gayati. So, Saman plus Am plus Ga plus Taku, this is the Alaukika Vigraha. Saman is related with the action of singing denoted by the verbal root Ga as Karma. So, there is semantic relatedness and so we have the Samasa taking place. Saman plus am plus ga plus tak is the alaukika vigraha. So samasa saudhnya takes place and then pratipadika saudhnya takes place and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes am and so we have saman plus zero plus ga plus a. In tak, ta and ka they both are deleted by tasya lopaha. So we have saman plus zero plus ga plus a. Now because there is a marker k, the final long a is deleted in ga and so we get the next step saman plus zero plus g plus a. And then finally we join these together and we get the word samaga. This means the same thing as the alaukika vigraha and laukika vigraha, namely one who sings the sama, sama gayati. This is the finally derived compound output. Now, in order to show the purpose of the marker T, we continue the derivation process further. And now, because of this marker T, the feminine suffix Nip is triggered. So, we have Samaga plus Nip. Nip means E. Nga and P, they both are markers. So, they are deleted by Tasya Lopaha. So, we have Samaga plus E. And then Yasya picture 64148 applies and then the final A in Samaga is deleted. So we have Samag plus E and as a result finally we get Samagi as the feminine form. Similarly one who sings Chakra, Chakram Gayati, in order to express this we get the compound Chakra Ga and the feminine form chakra gi. This is about the verbal root ga where the suffix tak is added. Now let us look at the example where the verbal root pa is involved. When the meaning is one who drinks liquor, we have the laukika vigraha suram pibati and then sura plus am plus pa plus tak is the alaukika vigraha. Sura is related to the action of drinking denoted by the verbal root pa in the sense of karma, that is the interrelation. So samasa takes place, the alaukika vigraha takes place, samasa saudhnya happens, then pratipadika saudhnya happens and then supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and the suffix am gets deleted. So we have sura plus zero 
plus pa plus a and then because of the marker k the long vowel a in pa gets deleted so we have sura plus pa a and finally the compound output derived is sura pa this is the finally derived compound output now we continue the derivation in order to show the purpose of the marker t which triggers the addition of the feminine suffix ni ni is e and then we so have surap plus e because this is e yase richa 64148 applies and deletes the final a in surap p final a in surap so we get surap plus e and so we get the form surapi feminine form similarly we can have shi dhum pi bati shi dhup and then shi dhupi these are the examples of upapada samasa at the end of which the suffix tat is added the next sutra is harater anudyamane ach this is 329 harater anudyamane ach 329 there are three padas over here harater is 5/1 of harati which is a mention of the verbal root ru harate he means immediately after the verbal root ru anudyamane is 7/1 of anudyamana meaning in the sense of not picking up udyamanam utkshepanam so anudyamane means not picking up ach is 1/1 one one of ach ach means suffix a now the marker ch triggers the operation that marks the final vowel accented chitaha the words continued are dhatoho 3191 which means immediately after a verbal root pratyayah 311 tatropapadam saptami stham 3192 kridating 3193 kartari krit 3467 and this says that the meaning of this suffix tak is karta karmani also is continued when the upapada is having the relation of karma with the action denoted by the verbal root that is the meaning so now the meaning of the overall sutra is that the suffix ach is added after a verbal root when the upapada is related to the action of accepting as karma and then this suffix means karta so now if we have the meaning one who accepts a part here the verbal root ru is used but it is not used in the sense of picking up anudyamane is there so now after this verbal root ru the suffix ach is added so the laukika vigraha is amsham harati amsham harati in this amsha is related with the action of accepting as karma amsha as karma so there is semantic relatedness because of which then the samasa happens now we have amsha plus am plus ru plus ach as the alaukika vigraha so harate ranudyamane at the suffix at the suffix ach upapadam i think prescribes the upapada samasa and so now amsha plus am plus ru plus ach is the alaukika vigraha then samasa saudnya takes place then pratipadika saudnya takes place and then supadhatu pratipadika yo applies and am gets deleted cha gets deleted because of tasya lopaha so now we have amsha plus 0 plus ru plus a now because of the suffix an ru has got ru which becomes ar now because the guna substitution takes place 
the sutra sarvadhatu karta dhatu ka yoho. So we have amsha plus zero plus har plus a, and finally we combine these two together and we get the form amsha hara. Amsha hara refers to the same meaning as the lauki kavigraha amsham harati. But this is a nitya samasa. And hara in this sense cannot be used independently. You cannot say amshasya haraha. That is not possible. Now similarly, one who accepts wealth, when this meaning is to be conveyed, we have the compound input riktam harati and the compound output is riktahara, riktaharaha. So when we have amsham harati, the meaning is amsham svikaroti ityartha, natu adhasthitasya urdhvam nayati. It does not pick it up and take it upwards. That is not the meaning intended. The intended meaning is amsham svikaroti, accepts. And that is why the given input is one who accepts a part. That is amsham hara, harati. And so amsha hara, that is the finally derived output. Now, there is one more statement found in the tradition, which is adding some more words in this section of the suffix ach. The statement is the following. Ach prakarane shakti langala ankusha yashti tomara ghata ghati dhanushu grahe rupa sankhyanam. So far the suffix ach was stated after the verbal root hara, ru, after the verbal root ru, now in this statement it is also stated after the verbal root graha. In this section of the suffix ach, the verbal root graha is to be added when shakti etc. are the upapada. Which means when shakti etc. are the upapadas, the suffix ach is added to the verbal root graha. So if we have the meaning one who holds the power, then we add the suffix ach after the verbal root graha and we get the form shakti graha. Then we have the meaning one who holds the plow. Then we add the suffix ach after the verbal root graha and we get the compound output langala graha. Then we have the meaning one who holds the goad and the compound output is ankusha graha. by adding the suffix ach to the verbal root graha. Then we have the meaning one who holds the stick and the finally derived compound output is yashti graha when we add the suffix ach after the verbal root graha. Then if we have the input one who holds the javelin, the compound output is tomara graha after we add the suffix ach after the verbal root graha. Then we have the meaning one who holds the pot. And we have the compound output ghata graha or even ghati graha by adding the suffix ach to the verbal root graha. Ghata and ghati. Then we have the meaning one who holds the bow. And the compound output generated is dhanur graha when we add the suffix ach after the verbal root graha with the upapada dhanus. Again, there is one more statement in the same vein in the tradition to add the suffix ach to the verbal root graha when sutra is the upapada and dhari is the arth, sutrecha dharyarthe. What it means is, in the sense of holding, add the suffix ach to the verbal root graha when sutra as a word is the upapada. Sutra means either a thread or any rule. I repeat, in the sense of holding, add the suffix ach to the verbal root graha when sutra is the upapada. So when the meaning is 
वन हु होल्ड्स द थ्रेड सूत्रम धारयति इन दिस सेंस यूज द वर्ड वर्बल रूट ग्रह टू मीन होल्डिंग एंड देन एट द सफिक्स अच एंड सो यू गेट द फॉर्म सूत्र ग्रह एज द फाइनली डिराइव्ड कंपाउंड आउटपुट सूत्र ग्रह then we have the next sutra vayasi cha which is 3 2 10 10 what it means is that the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root ru when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of karma and which also indicates the age i repeat the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root ru when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of karma and also when the compound indicates the age so now after having applying the rules in order to derive the finally derived compound output we get the examples asthi haraha shwa and kavachahara kumaraha asthihara and kavachahara being the compound outputs indicate the age of the person or the animal so asthihara refers to that stage in the life of a dog where he or she is able to pick up the bone and the stage of the development of kumara is indicated by the action when kumara is able to pick up the guard the protection so kavacha haraha kumaraha and asti haraha shwa vayas the age is indicated by the compound in as a whole udyamanam utkshepanam so this is the meaning intended in this particular sutra as well which was not there in the previous sutra harater anudyamane ach this is udyamana which is also intended in this particular sutra similarly we have the next sutra angi tachilye which means the suffix ach is added in the sense of a karta to the verbal root ru with the preverb a when the upapada is related to the action denoted by the verbal root in the relation of karma and when it also indicates the habit or being accustomed to that tachilya tachilya means tat swabhavata which means swabhaviki phalanapeksha pravritti the natural inclination without expecting any result or fruit now we have the meaning one who has a habit of bringing the flowers pushpani aharati iti shilam yasya saha this is the laukika vigraha pushpani aharati so pushpa is related to aharana action as karma so there is semantic relatedness so the samasa takes place so we have pushpa plus jas plus arhu plus ach now there is samasa saudnya upapadam ating plays a role samasa saudnya takes place so the pratipadika saudnya takes place and then the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yo applies and just gets deleted ch is deleted because of tasya lopaha so we have pushpa plus 0 plus arhu plus a now sarvathatuka ardhatuka yo applies and substitute ru in ru by ar so we have pushpa plus ahar plus a and finally we get the form pushpahara pushpahara means the same thing as pushpani har aharati iti shilam yasya saha similarly we also get the compound output phalahar which means phalani aharati iti shilam yasya saha one who has a habit of bringing fruits 
to summarize the markers attached to the suffixes stated in this section perform different roles in the derivation of the form at various stages. Some in the internal derivation process bring about some operations, block some operations, etc. Some trigger the operations like adding the feminine suffix as well as the accent of the compound. Specific meaning conditions denoted only by the compounding process is another highlight of this particular section. We continue studying some more sutras stating the suffixes, krit suffixes, which are part of the upapada compound derivation process in the coming lecture. These are the texts referred to. Thank you very much.